Ukraine's army is preparing for an attempt to reclaim the key southern city of Kherson. It is the largest Russian-occupied region in the south. The effort comes as fighters in the northeast are defending against Russia's ongoing attacks. CBS News foreign correspondent Holly Williams spoke with an American soldier fighting in the war in Ukraine about his experience. And we do have to warn you, the images you are about to see and the descriptions you are about to hear are disturbing. You could hear shooting, but then you could also hear grunts and people like fighting to the death with their bare hands. It's a very unique sound when you hear that many death rattles. But I He's from Tennessee, he told us, and came to fight in Ukraine because he was horrified by the Russian invasion. He wants to be known only by his call sign, Elvis. The carnage you're describing sounds like something out of World War II. Yeah. This is nothing like any conflict in the past 70 to 80 years. This war is not sustainable for either side. On the front line in southern Ukraine, he says he repeatedly witnessed Russian forces using white phosphorus munitions. It comes down extremely slow but there's nothing you can do and everything it touches just incinerates. Including this incident. Probably about 20 or 30 guys burning alive um, and several gunshots because uh, there was nothing else they'd do. So a lot of guys have suicide pistols and you'd hear them scream and then they would say goodbye and then blow their hell and heads off. So you actually heard 20 to 30 soldiers being burned alive yes, by white phosphorus. Yes, ma'am and some of them committing suicide yes, with their own pistols. Yes, ma'am. Oh, was that, must have been horrific. It's war. At least that's what I tell myself. He admits that he's traumatized and fears one of his former comrades could commit suicide because of what they went through together. Do you still think this is a righteous war? Yes, absolutely. We're fighting pure evil. Anybody in the West that asks Ukraine to just do peace talks, they need to go through these villages. They need to see what's been done to these people. If China invaded the U.S., hypothetically, leveled Los Angeles, leveled Seattle, Portland, massacred thousands, do you think the U.S. would just sue for peace? No. Russia has previously denied using white phosphorus munitions here in Ukraine. Elvis told us that if other Americans are thinking of volunteering with Ukraine's military, they should know that the odds are stacked against them and they'll be fighting for their lives. Tanya and Lana. Oh. Holly, such a compelling yeah. interview and hearing uh, um, what you have to say about him talking about other Americans that may be thinking about it. Uh, how many foreigners are fighting in the war in Ukraine? Well, we don't have uh, official numbers for how many you know, individuals have come from overseas to, to fight with Ukraine's military. Um, but anecdotally, I can tell you just from our time covering this war, um, there seem to be a lot of them because we run into them uh, the whole time all over the place in Ukraine. And, and they come from all over. Uh, people have volunteered to fight coming from the US. Uh, we know that several Americans have died here. Uh, the UK, Europe. Uh, I've met a fighter from Israel, uh, a frontline medic from New Zealand um, and even from Taiwan. You know, they've come here all the way from East Asia. You know, they come here for a variety of reasons. Some people have family ties to Ukraine. Uh, some people come for sort of overtly political reasons. They believe that Russia is a threat to, to global peace and security. Um, or they believe that the fight here in Ukraine is not just for Ukrainian freedom and democracy, but for freedom and democracy more generally. Um, and in the case of the, the Taiwanese fighters that I've um, spoken to, they see parallels between Ukraine's struggle with Russia and Taiwan's relationship with mainland China. So this is a conflict that's inspired people from all over the world to, to act. Holly, incredibly powerful interview. How have Ukrainians' attitudes, you know, there in Ukraine changed or not changed in the eight months since the start of the Russian invasion? 
Well, when you speak to people who are living sort of on the front line or right near the front line, um, you know, they're, they're exhausted. In a lot mm. of those places, there's constant shelling. Um, it's incredibly dangerous. You know, they, they go to bed at night not knowing if they're going to live until the morning. Um, but I think more generally, um, and this is borne out by, by polling numbers, uh, Ukrainians are determined to fight. Um, they say that they want to fight uh, until they win, and they believe that they are going to win this war. And going back to the point uh, that Elvis uh, made in that interview about negotiating for peace or perhaps Ukraine ceding territory to Russia in return for peace, the Ukrainians that we speak to are dead against that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't want any negotiation with Russia to be about handing over Ukrainian territory uh, in order to try and secure peace. And, and there are several reasons for that. One, that it's a, it's a matter of principle. It's their country. They're a sovereign state, and they think that they shouldn't have to hand over uh, territory. Secondly, they think that it sets a kind of dangerous precedent that Vladimir Putin gets to invade a neighbour, uh, kill a lot of people, and then uh, gets given uh, this reward. And thirdly, you know, many of them say that they simply don't trust Russia, that even if they did a deal that involved handing over territory uh, in order to get peace, they don't believe uh, that that would stop Russian aggression. All right. Well, Holly Williams and Keith, thank you so much. Again, such a powerful interview. Thank you so much Absolutely. for bringing it to us. Thanks, Holly.